Hello, my name is Benji Claus and welcome to Dice vs Cards. It is that time of year again ladies and gentlemen and what sort of content creator would I be without furnishing you with a top 10 list of Christmas gift ideas for either yourself or for friends and family. Now like last year's videos, which are still valid recommendations I hasten to add, we'll be breaking down these lists into four categories. Light, medium and heavyweight games. Well, as well as that, we're going to give you some stocking filler ideas as well. Today's episode starts things off easy breezy with the lightweight category. Now, all of these games will be reliable ideas for the casual gamer in your life, or one that just likes to play games with their family, or just isn't in the mood to tax that brain too much. What's appealing about these, first and foremost, is their accessibility. So enough waffle from me, let's get on with it. Number one, Quacks of Quidlingburg is a delightful little bag building and push your luck game that has a great deal of replayability to boot. You play the aforementioned Quacks looking to brew up an alchemical storm at a national fair. To achieve this wondrous goal, you'll be pulling tokens one at a time from a bag that will then be placed an amount of steps away from the previous token equal to the number you drew. You'll keep doing this until you are happy with your score, or you take too many of the basic tokens and the potion blows up in your face, limiting your options for the remainder of the turn. This core tenet is surrounded by a number of bells and whistles, and adds up to a great deal of tension and excitement each and every time you play. Number 2. Unmatched here showing the Battle of Legends Volume 1 box set is an asymmetrical miniature dueling game for two or four players. Although it's the miniatures doing the walking on the board, it's the cards from your chosen avatar's own unique deck that's doing the talking. This is a game about positioning and playing the right cards at the right time. There is no lady luck to be found here. It's a simple case of comparing the values on each side's cards and applying damage appropriately. To add a little flavour, cards also come with before, during and after combat abilities to keep things interesting. And outside of the strong core mechanics, this is a product that you can mix and match to your heart's content, conjuring up mythical matchups based on an expanding line of characters from pop culture. Number 3 Parks is more than just an absolute stunner of the game, it sees you taking control of two hikers on a wilderness trail. The game employs resource management and set collection, however it's the completely open and free movement that elevates it to another level. You can go as near or as far down the trail in one move, so long as the space isn't already taken and you end your movement closer to the end of the trail. You'll be picking up resources as you do, and using gear and water canteens to manipulate them. Ultimately cashing in for cards that represent the US National Parks, that will give you points come the end of the game. I'm not sure this whole thing works being any more complicated than that. It's beautiful, and it's backed up by an enjoyable gameplay experience. Number 4 it's a Wonderful World is a city builder set in the present to near future and that sees you drafting at the start of every turn, choosing from a number of multifunctional cards that you then either choose to keep so that you can build with them or discard so that you can take the resources from them. So far, so elegant. It's then a case of harvesting resources from previously built buildings and constructing new ones but every turn is done in a particular sequence that adds a bit of tactical planning to proceedings. This is a very simple game to teach that will see you reveling in the number of choices you get to make. It's this combination of drafting and sequencing that makes the game stand out. Number 5. Horrified is what happens when you mix Universal's renowned group of monsters with a cooperative pick up and deliver game. Again, this is a gameplay experience that's extremely light on mechanics, with the grid movement elements allowing you to make your way around the board, picking up the resources you need to defeat the monsters you're facing. The strength of the game low lies in the variety in objectives and win conditions each monster brings to the table. 
effectively constituting their own sub game that you need to complete to win as a team. Now you can mix and match the monsters you come up against and even increase the difficulty with more on the board. But when all's said and done, this is a game flooded with theme and some good old fashioned mechanics. Number 6. Draftosaurus is, uh, you guessed it, a bag drafting game with dinosaur meeples. You'll serve your own dino park that you'll be placing your deeples in and a dice that adds some take that elements to the game, prohibiting the other players from placing theirs in specific enclosures. Your board is two sided to add a little bit of extra replayability, but it's ultimately taking what you get from the bag and placing it in the most optimal pen that will mean the difference between success and failure. Although the box just about prohibits it from sitting in our upcoming stocking filler gift guide, it's a wonderfully portable game with a small footprint on the table and sure to be a hit with the younglings. Number 7 Gizmos is the little engine builder that could. You start off with a meagre tableau, but with the will to build some weird and wonderful machines. Taking one of four actions, be it randomly selecting from a large pool, or choosing from a small pool of resources, you'll use these to expand your mechanical marvels, which will then enable all sorts of weird and wonderful chain reactions once you start to expand your selection of gizmos. And that's where the true fun lies here, coming up with either simple or overly complex means to up the efficiency of your resource generation and grab as many points as you can before the end game triggers. It's a neat looking game and difficult not to get a kick out of. Number 8. Reef is an abstract puzzle game where you'll be picking or drafting cards from a communal marketplace or then plan one from your hand in order to gain and place the two pieces indicated on the card onto your ever-growing coral reef themed player board with a view to then creating the pattern found on the self same card if you're able to do so you pick up points and the game goes round and round like this until all reef pieces have been used the multifunctional nature of the cards is what makes the game really tick and is where the forward planning and strategy lies, as you don't get the tools to immediately score a card when you play it. Ultimately this is a fast paced game that's easy to pick up and teach, providing fun for all ages. Number 9. Planet is one part gimmick but two parts great concept and execution. You each start with a blank canvas in the shape of a 12 sided planet earth. Then you start drafting the magnetic tile pieces that you attach to your globe. This tile placement and pattern building game sees you crafting a habitable world for all shapes and sizes from the animal kingdom, all the while chasing each round's objectives in order to gain the most points. The components are of excellent quality and it's a really nice looking game. The hook here is the three dimensionality of what you're building. Each tile being broken down into segments makes for some delightfully visual strategy and forward planning. Number 10. Grim Forest is another highly produced and lightweight set collection game. You play as three littler pigs, or at least the nephews from the popular fairy tale. The aim being to build three houses quicker than your opponents can. Each turn you'll be simultaneously selecting a location to visit that will have the necessary resources you need to acquire. The kicker being that you'll get a bunch more of said resources if you're the only one that ends up at that location, being forced to share with others if not. There are a number of take that elements in the game and some mythical friends that can either help you or hinder others whenever you make progress on your houses. This is beautiful and whimsical with an undercurrent of deduction and disruption. Nice, clean fun. So there you have it, our top 10 Christmas gift ideas in the category of lightweight games. We hope you found something that's piqued your interest. Stay tuned next week for another set of recommends, this time of the medium weight variety. However, that's it from me. I'll see you next time.